Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 2024 Mercedes-Benz E-Sprinter. As with all of my reviews, I'm going to cover all of the ins and outs and take this thing on a thorough drive. There's a whole lot of stuff to cover, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Almost 30 years ago, Mercedes-Benz vans defined the modern light commercial vehicle segment with the Sprinter. Currently in its third generation, following its launch for the 2019 model year, the Sprinter's most direct competitors include the Ford Transit and the Ram Promaster. The Sprinter has always been popular for its ability to adapt to customer and industry-specific needs, and the latest ones are no exception. For 2024, the Sprinter is offered in more variants than ever before, including the cab chassis, cargo van, crew van, passenger van, and the all-new, all-electric e-Sprinter. The Sprinter's modular structure includes two wheelbases, three overall lengths, two heights, five different gross vehicle weight ratings, and various body variants for extreme variability and versatility the two most important attributes for any Sprinter. The lineup enables a tailor-made solution for almost all industries and has been a popular option with upfitters for quite some time. In fact, more than 75% of all commercial Sprinters sold are converted into industry-specific vans by upfitters. Use cases range from courier, express, and parcel vehicles to buses for passenger transport and special vehicles such as refrigerated vans, ambulances, construction site vehicles, and camper vans. The diesel models, whether it be the standard output with 170 horsepower or the high output with 211 horsepower, are equipped with a 9-speed automatic transmission. All Sprinters are rear-wheel drive by default, however, select models are available with 4MATIC all-wheel drive for extra traction. The Sprinter's current design represents a leap from a commercial vehicle with pure utility value to an impressive business card for commercial fleets and businesses. The previous generation's well-proven proportions were retained, but modernized, with hard contours given away to more soft and flowing lines. The front section is characterized by slim headlamps, various grill options, and a sloped hood. The front and rear bumpers are available painted. Optional LED high-performance headlamps with automatic high beam assist offer a better distribution of light and better nighttime visibility. When equipped, you get partial LED tail lamps too. LED fog lamps with cornering function are also available. The van's side profile features large surfaces with flowing transitions that create an organic and well-proportioned hole with tight joints. The large rear window ensures a clear view and more light for the interior, while a rear step allows easy entry and exit. The all-new E-Sprinter is the electrified pioneer of the large van segment. It's focused on short-range and dedicated route urban delivery services and localized tradesmen offering a multitude of technological innovations that make driving and fleet logistics more convenient and sustainable. At its North American launch, the E-Sprinter was only available as a 170-inch wheelbase, high-roof cargo van equipped with a 113 kilowatt-hour battery. It's only available with rear-wheel drive. For 2025, the E-Sprinter range will expand to offer the option of a smaller 81 kilowatt hour battery and a smaller body style with a 144 inch wheelbase, 11.4 inch lower roof height, and an approximately 40 inch shorter overall length. This will allow for greater flexibility and a lower starting price so customers can better choose the right configuration for their specific needs in terms of payload and range. The extended range compared to its competitors makes the E-Sprinter ideal for both daily urban use as well as longer journeys. 
The lithium iron phosphate battery technology eliminates the use of any cobalt or nickel and is ideal for light commercial vehicles due to its durability. Active thermal management improves efficiency and a heat pump is standard. The 170 inch wheelbase high roof e sprinter shown here can offer up to 488 cubic feet of cargo volume and a max payload of 2,624 pounds, which is a little less than a comparable diesel sprinter. The overall length of this example is 280 inches. Height comes in at 107.1 inches. The overall width, including the mirrors, is 92.5 inches. Without the mirrors, it's 79.5 inches. The mirrors can be folded manually if needed. Electrically folding mirrors are optional. The 144 inch wheelbase E Sprinter with the standard roof will offer up to 319 cubic feet of cargo volume and a max payload of 3,516 pounds. All e-sprinter variants allow for permissible gross vehicle weight of up to 9,370 pounds. E-expert upfitter solutions such as shelving systems, workbenches, or heavy-duty wood floors offer further available customization options for the load compartment to upfit the e-sprinter to a mobile workshop or a spacious delivery van. The closest rivals to the e-sprinter include the Ford e-Transit, the upcoming front-wheel drive Ram Promaster EV, GM's Bright Drop Zevo, and the Rivian Delivery. I haven't had any experience with the competition at the time of shooting this video, but let's face it, the biggest questions for EV shoppers is range and charging times. When comparing the key facts, the e-sprinter has a lot going for it. The estimated maximum range is 252 miles for the larger battery and about 173 miles for the smaller battery. In typical day-to-day -day use with the larger battery, I averaged about 200 miles on a full charge. The range is class leading and should be more than plenty for this van's intended use. The starting MSRP for the 2024 e Sprinter is $71,886 for the standard output and $75,316 for the high output. For 2025, the smaller, more affordable e Sprinter variant will start at $61,250. When it comes to colors, you have seven standard options, five premium options, and five premium metallic options. This example is finished in Brilliant Blue, which is one of the premium $755 options. For additional utility, Mercedes offers a wide portfolio of exterior upgrades from rooftop carrier bars to a full roof rack, mud flaps, and much more. The E Sprinter comes standard with 16 by 6.5 inch steel wheels and LT24575 all season Michelin tires. If you'd like a nicer look, you can opt for these silver painted light alloy wheels, which are the same size and have the same tires as the standard wheels. A full size spare wheel can be found under the back of the van. It's more accessible than the previous generation Sprinter, as is the vehicle toolkit, for quicker and easier changes. Efficient vehicles with a high utility value are a basic precondition for success in the tough, competitive environment of the transport and logistics sector. Some of the most important key figures making up the total operating costs of a fleet include the purchase price, fuel costs, and maintenance and repair costs. Beyond these, a broader view of the total cost of ownership also takes into account other factors such as vehicle fleet administration and the driver's workplace, as ergonomics and performance enhancing comfort are also part of the central importance for people and their work and efficiency. Minimizing downtimes is also very important. The E Sprinter's front suspension is a modular design that consists of struts, lower control arms, and a stabilizer bar. The wheel bearings and upper ball joints can be separately replaced to lower repair costs and downtime. Optimized front axle kinematics help minimize tire wear for a further contribution to lowering operating costs. Significant improvements to the springs and damping components are another example of the development principle that customer benefit is the driving force, 
where sector-specific expertise plays a decisive role. Customer trials reflecting day-to-day -day transport requirements provided the basis for significantly improved long-term durability. The rear suspension is a solid axle setup with reinforced composite leaf springs, shocks, and a stabilizer bar. All sprinters feature significant galvanizing of the underbody and sidewalls for corrosion protection. Optional, robust underbody paneling provides additional protection against stone impact damage. The design of the sprinter's brake system contributes to a reduction in maintenance costs. Low wear brake linings and brake discs improve long-term durability. The front discs are internally ventilated for cooling and better performance. The rear discs are solid. Four-wheel ABS, brake assist, and hill hold control are standard, as is an electronic parking brake. The discs are clamped down by twin piston and single piston calipers, respectively. Excellent pedal response and lower operating forces make day-to-day -day use more comfortable. Standard regenerative braking converts kinetic energy into electrical energy to help maximize range with five selectable recuperation levels. The level of recuperation can be adjusted with the paddles found on either side of the steering wheel. With the automatic regeneration function selected, the e-sprinter will automatically determine the energy recovery rate based on the traffic situation. The new multifunction steering wheel can be had wrapped in leather and features capacitive touch buttons to operate the driver's information system, the central infotainment system, cruise control, and more. Capacitive sensors within the steering wheel also allow it to detect whether hands are gripping the steering wheel. The steering wheel is manually adjustable for tilt and reach and is offered with heating to keep your hands warm on cold days. With the exception of all-wheel drive variants, all sprinters are equipped with speed-sensitive electric power steering as standard. This allows very easy maneuvering and parking, and also feels reassuringly safe at higher speeds. It assists you in holding the vehicle on course in crosswinds or on inclined road surfaces by actively reducing the counter-steering effort. Handling is more controlled than I thought it'd be, especially considering how big this thing was. The ride was well damped and body roll is kept in check. Once you get around the size, the e-sprinter is very easy to drive and pleasant to ride in on long trips. When it comes to towing, this example is able to pull up to 4,100 pounds. The trailer hitch is optional and comes with all of your necessary electrical connectors. A towing feature within the infotainment system allows you to input trailer profiles and customize settings. The eSprinter is based on a new drive concept that consists of three modules, making it easy to adapt the platform to a multitude of vehicle variants. The front module contains all of the high voltage components which can be combined with all variants regardless of wheelbase and battery size. The integrated high voltage battery is located in the center module, tucked into a robust battery housing in the underbody to save space. By mounting it where they did, it lowers the van's center of gravity, which positively influences handling and helps increase driving safety. The rear module houses the permanent magnet synchronous electric motor, which drives the rear axle. The motor weighs only 286 pounds and is characterized by high efficiency and optimized thermal management. The motor is available in power levels of either 100 or 150 kilowatts of peak output, which translates to about 136 and 204 horsepower respectively, and delivers torque up to 295 pound-feet. The torque output is the same regardless of the peak power output. This example had the high output motor, which I highly recommend if you were doing a lot of highway driving or hauling heavy stuff. Acceleration from a standstill is leisurely, but more than adequate for the mission at hand. The e-sprinter gives up a minuscule amount of cargo space and towing capability compared to a diesel sprinter, but it provides clean, quiet, and smooth performance in return. Top speed is limited to 75 miles per hour. 
The transmission is a single speed unit that's operated through an electronic column selector. With your foot on the brake, you pull it down to select drive, pull it up for reverse, or move it halfway to select neutral. Park is engaged via the button at the end of the stalk. A load adaptive electronic stability control system is standard. Three different drive modes allow for customization of performance and energy consumption. Comfort delivers full power and torque. Economic limits power for more efficiency. Maximum range further reduces power output along with limiting the use of certain features to extract the most mileage. The aforementioned regenerative braking system also helps to maximize range. The e-sprinter is capable of charging with both alternating current and direct current. The onboard charger, which converts the current in the vehicle when charging with alternating current such as a wall box, has a maximum charging power of 9.6 kilowatts. To minimize charging times for customers, the e-sprinter can be charged with up to 115 kilowatts at a fast charging station. Fast charging from 10 to 80 percent of full capacity takes just over 40 minutes for the 113 kilowatt hour battery. Charging time using a 240 volt wall box at 32 amps from 0 to 100 percent takes about 12 and a half hours. Payment at a charging station is convenient with Mercedes Me Charge, which integrates charging point operators such as ChargePoint, Electrify America, and EVGo into a single network. A special partnership with ChargePoint also enables fleet customers to access convenient fleet depot charging. Specialized charging hardware, vehicle telematics, and software solutions can also be tailored to a specific fleet. This flexible solution gives customers with multi-brand fleets the ability to monitor all of their fleet operations from a single interface. The eSprinter also comes with a comprehensive service package, which is intended to reduce the total cost of ownership while ensuring high uptime. Maintenance costs in accordance with the service booklet and manufacturer specifications within the first four years or up to a maximum of 100,000 miles are covered. This coverage includes regular and professional inspections of the high voltage components and other vehicle parts and functions. Depending on what Sprinter model you're looking at, the load compartment can be independently adapted to suit individual purposes and business models, whether you want it fully stripped or fully equipped. Step-in height is excellent whether you're coming in from the back or the side. The standard metal floor can be covered with lightweight plastic flooring or heavy-duty wood flooring. For example, if the van is used by service technicians as a mobile parts store carrying heavy loads, bulky items, or shelving, then the heavy-duty wood flooring is the best choice, as it was primarily developed for transport requirements where the load is distributed over just a few load-bearing points. With a more even load distribution, the lightweight plastic floor is a great option that offers water resistance and a weight savings of 40 pounds versus the wood floor. Load carrying cladding on the wheel arches are another optional feature. When equipped, the full width of the load compartment can be used above the wheel arches. Cargo can be secured using rail systems in the floor, at belt rail height, and below the roof frame. Other innovations include optional movable pallet supports with an integrated stowage compartment in the entry steps and inside roof racks. If your cargo is temperature sensitive, load compartment heating and cooling systems are available. The cargo vans feature a full width load compartment partition as an option. This example has the solid partition, but you can opt for one with a window if you'd prefer. Electric closing assist is optional for the right sliding door so that you don't have to close it as hard by yourself. Simply close it with light force and the electric mechanism will draw the door tight to the body. A fully electric sliding feature for the door is optional. The optional floor coverings create a smooth, seamless floor for ease of storage and walking, not to mention extra noise insulation. The standard setup for the rear doors allow them to open up to a 90 degree angle, but you can opt for a 270 degree swing out feature for additional side to side room if needed. 
With a built-in self-locking feature, the doors can be safely opened and closed with one hand. A plethora of LED light and LED strip lighting in the load compartment give you better visibility day and night with minimal shadows. The LEDs switch on and off automatically when the doors are opened and closed, but can also be controlled via the overhead control panel in the cockpit. The Sprinter's purpose-built interior stands out by offering high-grade materials, comfortable seats, premium infotainment, and ergonomic design and more versatility than ever before. As someone who has not had experience with this class of van before, I was surprised by how nice it was. No, it's not luxurious, but it's very well put together and offers a wide range of comfort amenities and thoughtful touches. Like the rest of the van, there are enough options in here to suit any commercial or personal need. Mercedes has comprehensively upgraded the standard equipment for the third generation Sprinter and the eSprinter. By tailoring the equipment packages more precisely to the specific wishes of customers. Functional equipment, which is already often purchased together, has been increasingly bundled in packages. One package I'd highly recommend is the premium Mercedes-Benz User Experience Package. It includes a ton of stuff, such as a leather-wrapped heated steering wheel, a 10.25-inch touchscreen infotainment system, smartphone integration, built-in navigation, rain-sensing wipers, a wet wiper system for more effective windshield cleaning, an acoustic package, and more. The acoustic package is also available by itself. It adds more sound deadening materials, noise barriers, and sound and heat insulators. There are three upholstery options, including Maturin Black Fabric, Kaluma Black Fabric, and Black Leatherette. Rubber floors are standard. Additional all-season or carpeted floor mats are optional. Utility and durability are key here. The driver and passenger seats come standard with manual adjustments. You can slide them, adjust the height and pitch of the bottom cushion, recline the backrest, adjust the headrest, and extend additional thigh support if needed. There's individual adjustable armrests, too. The door panels have fixed pattern armrests. The seats can be further upgraded with power lumbar support, comfort headrests, electric adjustments with memory settings, three-stage heating, and even swiveling. Keyless start, cruise control, power windows, and electrically adjustable side mirrors are standard. The seats are designed for easy ingress and egress, especially useful for delivery drivers. Despite more of a flat design than what I'm used to, I found the seats to be quite comfortable, even on a two-hour round trip down the highway. Pretty much every inch of the interior has a functional benefit that leads to a tremendous amount of stowage and fantastic user-friendliness. Everywhere you look, there's a pocket, cup or bottle holder, or tray. Across the dashboard, there's a large tray ahead of the driver and passenger, each with two bottle holders. In the middle, you can opt for a covered compartment that houses three USB-C ports, a 12-volt power outlet, and a wireless smartphone charging tray. Beneath the climate controls, you have a jut out that houses two cup holders and bottle holders. On the passenger side, there's an open glove compartment where you can keep the owner's manual or other small items. The door panels have upper and lower compartments. The upper ones have additional bottle holders. Overhead, above the sun visors, there's additional storage for the driver and passenger. In the overhead console, you have sunglass storage. In between the seats, you have a giant open cavity that can be put to use as you see fit, including the installation of a third jump seat. The new Sprinter and eSprinter offer the latest generation of the Mercedes-Benz User Experience infotainment system, with a 10.25-inch display. It features fast computing power and improved menu navigation, granting customers a digital and interactive experience that you wouldn't typically expect from a utility vehicle. I've used this system and its different forms across a wide range of Mercedes passenger vehicles, and I have to say that I'm a big fan. With its intelligent conversational voice assistant, certain actions can now be triggered without the activation term, Hey Mercedes. 
The voice assistant uses microphones and the optional comfort overhead control panel to recognize which front seat the command is coming from. Hey Mercedes also explains vehicle functions and provides support if, for example, you want to connect your smartphone via the Bluetooth interface. An integrated smartphone connection to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto offers a wireless option. Sirius XM satellite radio is also an option. Software updates and new vehicle or comfort functions can conveniently come into the vehicle via over-the-air updates. Another particularly practical function of the infotainment system is the display of the free space behind the rear. The system uses the rear view camera to show a hatched area in the central display in which the rear doors can be opened. The distance is programmable and can therefore be adjusted according to the size of the load. The infotainment system in conjunction with the Mercedes Me Connect app provides a wide range of digital extras, which make the Sprinter and eSprinter increasingly intelligent, and everyday life of customers even more convenient and efficient. Mercedes Me Connect services, such as the optional navigation with electric intelligence, enhance the electric vehicle ownership experience even further, as it calculates an optimized route, including charging stops in real time, dependent on the current traffic situation and topography of the route. This feature also calculates the best possible charging strategy to get to the destination as quickly as possible. Further efficiency and comfort is guaranteed with pre-entry climate control, which can be activated in advance via the Mercedes Me Connect app, via the infotainment system, or spontaneously via the vehicle key. The eSprinter comes standard with single zone climate control. The digital automatic climate control system equipped on this example is optional. An electrically heated windshield is also optional. The safety and assistance systems in the new Sprinter and eSprinter are equipped with additional and in some cases new or further developed functions. For example, the standard active brake assist system now includes an intersection function that can warn of vertically crossing or oncoming vehicles at speeds up to 37 miles per hour and of dangerous overtaking maneuvers at speeds up to 43 miles per hour. It can intervene in an emergency at speeds up to 25 miles per hour and assist with turning if a collision with another vehicle is imminent. In addition, active brake assist provides support at higher speeds. The new side guard assist, available in combination with blind spot assist, helps to better perceive other road users in a defined area on the passenger side. If the system detects another road user in a danger area, an LED light flashes in the exterior mirror when the turn signal is activated. At the same time, an acoustic warning signal sounds via the instrument cluster. Optionally for the first time, the moving off information assist is available to avoid collisions with other road users in front of the vehicle when driving away. The function is active up to a speed of 6 miles per hour. In addition, a new front camera enhances the active lane keep and assist function by protecting it against unintentional lane departure. If the system's camera detects a lane departure, a corrective steering intervention is made to steer the vehicle back into the lane. Another helpful option is the digital interior mirror, which offers a comfortable view to the rear even if there's no rear window or visibility through the interior. A high dynamic range camera on the roof of the rear of the vehicle transmits an image of the traffic behind the Sprinter to the rear view mirror. Additional available features include active distance assist, traffic sign assist, and a parking package with a 360 degree camera system. Dual front airbags, front seat mounted side airbags, and window airbags are standard. Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so and make sure you turn those notifications on. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.